Hello everyone, Kent Bressler here. I want to welcome you to Kent's Kidney Stories. During our time together um, over these podcasts, I'd like to uh, discuss kidney disease. I'd like to tell you about my journey as a transplant patient, but also talk about dialysis, kidney donation, and just about anything else that might be of interest. Kent's Kidney Stories podcast endorsed and sponsored by kidneysolutions.org. Good afternoon from Kerrville, Texas. We're uh, going to change this up a little bit today. This is Kent Bressler, and uh, we're going to be doing, this is our third podcast, and we're going to do it remotely. I'm in Kerrville, and Jason, my pal, my engineer, uh, is in San Antonio. So we're expecting some glitches. If it happens, we'll just live with it. But if it goes real smooth, we'll say it was just pure luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, Jason? That's right. <laughs> That's right, Ken. <laughs> okay, let's start with prayer. Lord, Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything, acknowledge you so that you can direct my words, my thoughts, and my actions. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I really have a a lot to talk about today. I don't know if we're going to go into rambling mode or what, but we're going to talk because it's been a a very good week for Kidney Solutions. Um, you know, kidneysolutions.org, we're a, an organization that helps people find donors, and we do that all free of charge. So this is a podcast that, that is uh, part of this program, and we'll be doing a lot with Amanda DeLeon and with Jason here and uh, with several other people that are connected with this. But this 501c specifically addresses uh, kidney transplant, perfect uh, perfectly so because I was transplanted like quite a few years ago. But in essence, what what this whole program is with Kidney Solutions is helping people find donors. We like to do it preemptively, but we don't shy away from people on dialysis and we don't say no. So there you go. We're on Facebook we have a a website that you're surely welcome to go look at. It's called kidneysolutions.org. And we're on Instagram and and all all the other social medias. I can't name them all. I don't do much with it. Amanda's the pro and Jason helps us out quite a bit. So anyway, I'm I'm just the yapper, not the rapper, the yapper. So I thought today... I, I, you know, there's sites on on the on the internet and on Facebook, uh, like uh, transplant groups that people that have get invited in because they've had transplants and they're kind of closed groups. And I've been really monitoring those. Uh, actually, it, they're kind of enlightening because they're scary to me. But I understand people have a lot of questions, and some of the questions don't actually add up to in my way of thinking, to be healthy in some respects. But I want to talk about, I want to talk, talk about medications. I want to talk about, first of all, how I journeyed through my, my immunosuppressives. Because immunosuppressive therapy is paramount to a transplant. It is something that is, no one's going to escape. If you have it, you're going to be on have a transplant, you're going to be on immunosuppression. And that therapy is not perfect, and to say the least. It's fraught with danger, number one, and it's medically indicated and it's doctor-driven. If you think you can medicate yourself and try to medicate yourself on your immunosuppressives, go on and off, come back on or stop or whatever, you're, you're sadly mistaken. The only person that can regulate that for you is your physician. And I don't want you to forget that. 
in 30 some years with my transplant, I have never, ever messed with my medication. If the doctor told me to take 150 milligrams, that's what I took. If I had questions about it, side effects from it, the first person I called was the doctor. And I wanted to talk to the doctor. I didn't want to talk to the nurse or to the transplant team. I wanted to talk to the doctor. And that's the kind of relationship I built with him over the years. And and uh, I've wore two of them out already. So trust me, this immunosuppressive is a, is a very potent drug, number one, but it's it's a lifesaver. There's no other options. There are many, many different kinds of medications that are immunosuppressive. And uh, in my journey, I was on sand immune. And it's actually having a little bit of a comeback now. There's Imuran, which was one of the very first. There's Prograf. There's Celsept. I can go on and on and on about these drugs. But the most important thing to remember is once you're on it, you're going to be on it. But there's going to be lots of adjustments. I started out with sand immune with a, 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 a plunger, and I would pull up my medicated dose, and I'd push it into either orange juice or chocolate milk. And that's how I took it until they developed a pill. That's how early on I was, I was on this drug. So now they have... Prograf and they have Celsep and they have all these other types of medications and they're all in pill form. So real important, know your know what medicines you're on. Don't just say, well, I'm on immunosuppressive. What well, what kind of immunosuppressive? When I spent a lot of time, uh, I spent a lot of time going back and forth from the doctor, getting blood draws and and uh, seeing whether the level was right. The level has to be right. There's a normal for every different type of medication. And you just don't guess at that. That's a done by blood draw. So it's going to be inconvenient for you. You got to make yourself aware. I traveled 60 miles round trip twice a week for two years to really get mine where I where it was uh, going to stay for the rest of my life. And it's tough. But those so dialysis and so is death. So I, I never look at it any other way than whatever has to happen. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do it under doctors, the, the doctor's eye. So I want to talk to you about the very first one that I, I was aware of, um, immunosuppressive, because I have a friend who's been on for 40, 48 years. He was transplanted 48 years ago. And it's Imuran, and it was one of the very first ones and had a lot of side effects I won't go into. But then along came uh, uh, Sandimmune or Cyclosporin, and then uh, came along Celsep, Prograf, all of these, and they've all been better, each one of them. But they all are different for different people. They don't affect you uh, the same. There's nobody that has the same effects to it. So be real careful when you start listening to other people. Just because they got it doesn't mean you have it, a reaction to it or a, a, a symptom of uh, not being able to tolerate it. It's individualized and it's not always a medicine. So again, get back to the doc. That's your key. There's lots of new drugs coming out. Uh, in 40 years with my condition, I've never seen uh, an effort like it is now to come up with some new medications and not only immunosuppressive, but I'm talking about drugs that are actually going to suppress or, or hopefully can cure the illnesses that of kidney disease, but they're, they're very experimental now. And some of them are in trial, but bear, bear in mind that if you're on a medication, you're standing on it and under your doctor's care, there's always an alternative. If something goes wrong, there's a way to the way to fix it. it. May not go exactly right the first time, but there's ways of, of fixing side effects, and there's way ways of fixing uh, the amount of drug that you have to take, and to to minimize the side effects. So, don't give up on immunosuppression. You're going to be on it the rest of your life. And remember, prednisone, prednisone is 
an immunosuppressive. It suppresses your immune system. And when we say immunosuppression, what we mean is it takes that body's protection away to, to fight off infection. If you don't have yourself immuno, or immunosuppression, the first thing that's going to happen is whatever comes in your system is going to attack your kidney and they'll, it'll reject. So going off of it, uh -uh, we don't do that. Adjusting the medication on our own, on our own time and what we think we ought, uh -uh, we don't do that. It's a doctor thing. So keep it a doctor thing. Okay. I really, uh, I really think that, it, that these meds are important, but they're not so important as being able to, to look at how you, you, you arrive at getting a transplant. Can, there's a, a, like three phases we say at Kidney Solutions. There's the pre-op phase finding a donor. There's actually the transplant day on the process, and then there's follow-up. There's, there's post-op. That's when the rubber meets the road. That's where we like to concentrate really hard after we found that donor. We start preparing that person for what's going to happen after the transplant. And it is fun. Trust me. It's, there's change every day, seems like. But it's something to look forward to, especially if you've never been on dialysis. That's a good thing. But if you're on dialysis and you're going to get a transplant, that's even better. Because you're going to be healthier. You're going to have more vitality. You're going to be more aggressive. You're going to have much more energy. And be, and be honest with you, you're going to be human again. You're going to want to do things. You're going to want to, you're going to be with your family. You don't want to just shrivel up and just hide. And It's going to be good. So concentrate on the idea that once you get that transplant, you're going to take care of it because it's yours and you're responsible. Doc's not responsible. Your wife's not responsible. Your husband's not responsible. You, you are the one that's going to be responsible for it. So one of the things when we work with people, they say, well, gee whiz, uh, I don't know how to ask somebody for a kidney. I don't know how to ask that. And, okay, fine. We understand that. It is tough to tell somebody you got a, you've got an illness. If you don't tell them, though, can you tell me how it is they're going to be able to pray for you? Besides that, how in the world are they going to be able to give you one of their kidneys if they don't know you're sick? And it's not a matter of telling them you're sick. It's a matter of telling them what you have. I was in a discussion the other day with a, a, a fellow that's searching, been searching for a couple months. And I asked him, I said, what happens when someone asks you, Ernie, how are you feeling today? Is your response, oh, feeling fine. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't feel better. I said, Ernie, is that really, is that really the way you feel? Honestly, now tell me, is that how you feel? Ernie said, no. I said, well, why don't you tell him how you felt? He was asking you. It wasn't just passing conversation. My suggestion is, why don't you just tell him you got kidney disease? You'd feel a whole lot better if you could find somebody to give you a kidney. You'd be whole again, and you'd be on, you'd be over this kidney disease for, for the time being. It would be very helpful to you. Telling them you're all right, eh? it's, it's not telling yourself the truth, and they sure don't know. His response was typical. He said, you know what? I never thought of that. I said, well, I understand. I understand where you're coming from because when I was sick, I didn't want anybody to know. But I didn't want them to know. I was afraid I'd lose my job. I was afraid I was going to be ostracized. I didn't think people would want to have anything to do with me because I was, quote, sick. You're not sick. You have kidney disease, along with 30 million other people. So throw that idea out and tell them. When you tell your story, be positive about it. Tell them. 
you will be a whole lot better as soon as you can get transplanted. And that's your main goal. You're going to look for somebody who's got the courage to stand up and say, hey, Ernie, hey, Bob, hey, Jason, I would love to give you my kidney. Or I know somebody who would be interested. If you tell them, you can't imagine how many people that's going to expose. Probably more than you'll ever get on the internet or social media, all that stuff. Just by telling one person, it probably is going to be multiplied by tenfold, maybe more. And those 10 will tell 10 more. But if you say, I'm fine and go on about your business, you just get sicker. So it's up to you. You're the one that tells your story. No one tells it better than you anyway, nor do they live it better than you. So tell them. So that was my topic for the day. I guess it's a lecturing point. I get off on a tangent once in a while, and I get pretty emotional about this because, you know what? I don't want anybody to have to suffer through dialysis or suffer through kidney disease. Yeah, I know transplant isn't a cure, but give me an idea what's better. Just tell me, email me, tell me what you think is better than a transplant. I can't think of anything. I'm real interested in, in uh, this next little session with you and my best friend section. I have two daughters and these two kids, I call them kids, they're in their 40s now. I won't tell you exactly how many, but in their 40s. And they've got kids themselves, and they're raising them. And I'm laughing a lot of the time because I see things that are going on that I knew would happen. And, and But bless their hearts, they're good mamas. They're both really good mamas. Fortunately, so far, they haven't had any signs of FSGS. We've been watching, and none of the kids do. Okay, so that genetic quote the thing that's genetic or part of part of uh, their genomes that's that doesn't look like it's in the equation now because we know that fsgs starts off pretty young most of the time so anyway i want to i want to tell you about these two kids you know when i was uh, when i was sick when i was having uh, a high creatinine level and and uh, i i was still working and I was raising these girls with my wife, Catherine. And I'll tell you what, I don't remember a lot of that. It's not because I'm elderly and aged or whatever, but <laughs> I, re I really have a hard time remembering it. So I lost their childhood. I wasn't really there for them. Oh, I was there. I was present, but I wasn't present. I was used the excuse, I guess that, uh, no energy and I did I I was trying to survive okay and I I'm talking to some people right now are doing the same thing so I'm going to tell you you grab on that family and hug them hard don't worry about them they'll grow up they'll grow up to be good people because you raised them you had them okay they got your DNA the most important thing when you look at these two girls was the fact that they loved their dad and they didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew I was, I was in trouble. Okay. And I would tell them that and they would, okay, dad, we, you know, we understand, but I tell you what, it didn't change behavior much. They went on, they were young girls and, and they did what they needed to do. They grew up, right? But guess where they are now today? Both of them. They're successful. They're God-fearing. And they know what kidney disease is all about. And they've helped people. And they're all in on this with me. Okay? But Gretchen and Celeste have given me four grandkids that have given me more pleasure in the last 10 to 14 years than I could ever imagine. And to think if I hadn't had that transplant, I wouldn't have been there to see that. So what is it that you want to do? You want to have a transplant? You want to be on dialysis? That's your choice. Perfectly okay with whatever you decide to do. But I can guarantee you, if you want to live to see your kids grow up, take care of the CKD, get rid of this kidney disease, 
have a transplant. I'm talking to you now whether you're on dialysis or you just found out and you're just diagnosed. In my heart, I honestly believe had I not had these two children, I wouldn't be here today. They are the focus of my life. They are my being. They mean more to me than anything. They're strong. They come to their dad and mom when they need help. I'm not talking about financial help. They're willing to share their in their their problems and, and their successes. They're full of life. And that's what I am is full of life. And we're going to do this thing now with this kidney disease. We're going to run her down. We're going to work it till my last breath is drawn. And I can tell you, I don't like kidney disease. I don't think you like kidney disease. So let's do something about it. Grab your family. Tell them how much you really love them because they're going to help you through all of this. Kidney solutions, other mentors, surround yourself with people who have plenty of love and can understand what you're going through. Make sure you tell them what you're going through. Not as an excuse, but tell them so they can help you because you're going to need a lot of help. And once you're over it, you can help a lot of people. We've done a couple of these, and my partner, Amanda, told me, she says, I like them. I like this, these podcasts. I think they're good. But you need something at the end. You need something catchy. Well, I don't have it. I don't have something catchy. Not this time around. Maybe I'll develop them. I want to tell you something. I want to ask you today... Are you taking care of yourself? Are you doing everything you can possibly do to be prepared for what's ahead of you with kidney disease? Are you prepared? Are you ignoring it? Are you watching what you eat? You're watching your salt? You're watching your blood pressure? Are you exercising? I'm going to brag a little bit here. I walk every day, a simple walk every day. But that simple walk now at the age of 69 has turned into five miles a day. It serves two purposes, that little walk I have. It gives me time with the Lord. I can pray. But it energizes me. I don't need a nap in the afternoon. Well, I'll take one. Don't think I won't. But I don't need one. I can go through. It just makes your joy to veer, your, your joy, your happiness. It makes you a better person if you walk. And you don't have to walk five miles. You walk around the block. If you're not walking now, you better get started. Just walk around the block. And I know people that are, are much, much more debilitated than us that try to walk every day. So my ending point here with you is Who's your best advocate? It's you. That's my takeaway today. Your best advocate is you. Okay, see you next time.